What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and one and only James Williams, Dark Waters, and I am back to do a deep dive because I want to know what the hell is going down in Lake Lanier. Now, just recently, it's been going viral. Everybody, Lake Lanier, people drowning. Lake Lanier's cursed. Lake Lanier, people's drowning. Lake Lanier's people's cursed. Lake Lanier is dangerous. Clearly, people have died there. Why they died? People say it's a curse. People say it's because of the destruction of a black town that was flooded out. People say it's because of Native Americans. I don't know. That's why I'm doing this video. So I'm starting off this video telling you I don't know, but I'm going to find out. And that's what the ambassador does. See, the ambassador does research. I ain't going to just be spitting stuff that everybody else spit. So without any further delay, let's find out what's going on with Lake Lanier. Now, where do you start? Where do you start? Let's start with most recent times. Let's see what's in the news about Lake Lanier. Here we go. Well, that didn't take too long to find something in the news about Lake Lanier. That was extremely fast. The water park is not letting anyone get in the water. Here's video from News Chopper 2 over Margaritaville at Lanier Lakes, where the beach is open, but no one's swimming in it. Management told Channel 2's Brian Mims it's for safety. For Wendy Brown, this is the ultimate lake life. Sliding her paddleboard onto Lanier's clear water, gliding beneath a blue sky. Out here, there is no fencing her in. To put a fence up at a beach, this just makes no sense. It's ridiculous, if you ask me. <laughs> but there is a fence in the water all along the beach at Margaritaville on Lake Lanier. I mean, it's not a beach, it's just sand. The management of the water park says you can sit on the sand and soak up the sun all you want. Just don't get in the water. In a statement, it says the safety of guests is prioritized above all else. After careful consideration, we have decided to no longer offer swimming in the lake area. While we understand that this may be disappointing for some, we believe it is the right decision to maintain a safe environment for all our guests to enjoy and will allow us to put added focus on other parts of the park to offer a better overall experience for all our water park guests. Stop, pause. All right. That's, uh, that's wild. That is wild. So it actually made the news that they don't want people swimming in the lake. Now, mind you, some of you guys have already seen this and you're watching me go through this live. I'm not it's not like I've done the research prior to it. I'm going through it as I talk. I'm going through it and I'm coming to you with the observations that I have. So we've established that straight up it hit the news. The people who own this park, for some reason, don't want people in the water. They haven't established why they say for public safety. I'm going to keep on playing because I want to see if there's a if they give a reason. You know what I'm saying? They're going to say there's a fungi in the water. If they say there's an amoeba in the water, why are you not letting people swim? Kim Densmore wonders if no lake swimming might hurt business. I don't think that's right. I really don't understand that. Park management would not explain what specifically they're worried about with lake swimming, but they do say this, that lake access is available in a controlled environment at the aquatic adventure attraction and... Management says there are kayak and paddleboard rentals available. Live at Lake Lanier, Brian Mims, Channel 2, Action News. So they didn't give you a reason why. They didn't give you a reason why. Hmm. Let's see what else we can find in the news. I'll be back. All right, found another one on Lake Lanier. Let's see what they're saying is going on. It'll be this week, so tens of thousands of your neighbors probably be headed. Make sure I have my audio on. Yes, it's on. To Atlanta's favorite lake this holiday week, Lake Lanier. Now, even though the water will feel really good because it's going to be cold, John Sherrick shows us there are dangers in the water that we should be really concerned about. And they said just came in one day and showed up. And a week later, it was still there and it was starting to go down. John Barker with Lake Lanier Association has been fighting abandoned docks and boats for years. And you could actually see a petroleum sheen on the water. I mean, you could see the oil and gas leaching out. It was very obvious. He's cleaned up more than half a dozen in the past couple of years. He was thinking he'd gotten a handle on it. But as soon as he gets them hauled away, more take their place. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
The premise of this this news broadcast is that Lake Lanier is a dangerous place, excuse me, because there are boats that are sinking or shipwrecks. This is what I'm hearing. Uh, petroleum on top of the water. Okay. Let me wrap my mind around this. We do a whole news story at the beginning of the summer when everybody's going to Lake Lanier and we talk about how dangerous it is. And then the guy says that oh, he's pulled out 12 shipwrecks in the past how many months? I'm sorry. I mean, you could see the oil and gas leaching out. It was very obvious. He's cleaned up more than half a dozen in the past couple of years. He so he's cleaned up six shipwrecks in the past couple of years, a dozen years. All right. You expect me to believe this? This is stupid. So, I mean, really think about it. That's dumb. One guy cleaned up shipwrecks. And it's been six of them, and that's what makes the lake dangerous. But let's just, just keep thinking going. He'd gotten a handle on it, but as soon as he gets them hauled away, more take their place. And so there it. There it sits, and so now we got to struggle with you know how to get it off. The owner of this houseboat tells a familiar tale. She got it cheap from someone who was tired of the boating life. She pictured fun and sun. What she got was a boat that sank almost immediately and she doesn't have the money to haul it out of the lake. You got to send in a crew. They've got to float it, get it on top of the water, and get the water out of it, and they got to get it to a ramp. And I have a trailer there waiting, and they put it on the trailer, bring it up the ramp a little bit to where the boat can drain off, and then I pull it over here to find out what's going to happen next. Then you have to get a trailer to haul it to the metal recycling. Common sense. And we have to bring them piece by piece. You have to pay them to strip it and re- Stop pause. Okay. Let's establish a few things here, ladies and gentlemen. Put let's put our let's put our thinking hats on. So you, on the right over there listening, you on the left over here listening. We are the state government of Georgia, and there's a lake. There's a lot of boat wrecks in the lake, and there's oil and gas spilling into the water, which is an environmental hazard, right? The concept and idea that the reason why there are so many shipwrecks and just all this debris in the lake is because of other people that can't afford to get it out of the water is absolutely insane. Excuse me. It's absolutely insane. Because what you want me to believe is that you don't have any environmental rules and regulations that you don't have any state funding or federal funding to remove these things from the lake. That the homeowner, the owner has to come in and move it out of the lake themselves. That's dumb. That's stupid. This entire news broadcast is stupid. And with that being said that it's stupid. Why did they feel the need that they had to say something? So it's a, it's a case where you have to give a warning, even though the warning that you're giving is fundamentally dumb at its core. Again, ladies and gentlemen, the stink on the ambassador does not know anything about this lake. You're going to see me walk through it. I, you may be saying, yeah, because it's this. That's understanding both to me. You understand it. I don't bear with me, please, as I wrap my mind around what's going on and come to a conclusion for myself, which is what I encourage everyone else to do. Okay. Cycle everything. And you're somewhere in the ten to fifteen thousand dollar range. That's a cost the Lake Lanier Association picks up with help from the counties and the state. This party cruiser went down Memorial Day weekend. Luckily, the owner hauled the boat out of the water in the last couple of weeks, so Party Cove is safe for the holiday. It's not just boats; it's docks that have broken free. The neighbors actually named it Beaver Dock. Remember this one we showed you last July. It had been there so long a beaver built a den on it. It was just hauled away more than a year later. Pieces of jagged metal break off of the boats and docks and lie in wait for tubers, skiers, and swimmers. I think it's a huge safety issue. Okay. So what they're saying is that there's a lot of debris in the water. And that this debris that's all over the water. I'm sorry, let me fix this camera. Because it's leaning. This debris that's all over the water is a problem, makes it dangerous. But admittedly, they admit in the story that it's not that much debris. When you see, I mean, they literally admit. He said six of them, half a dozen. He's cleaned up more than half a dozen in the past couple of years. Half a dozen so over the past 
how many years, right? That that can't be the answer to what's going on. That doesn't make any damn sense. And anybody who will believe that is a damn idiot. Let's keep digging. I'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the next angle that makes all the sense in the world to take a look at is the the angle that's probably the most popular one as it pertains to this, that this lake is cursed because there was an African-American city or a black city that was there that Whitey came along, destroyed everything and flooded the city. Uh, Marietta, Georgia, Cleveland Brown still remembers the night in 18, 1912, her, uh, his family was chased out of Forsyth County with racial violence. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into this because everybody in mama is covering this. If you look at this topic everywhere, it's saying that um, our ancestors, black people saying that their ancestors are the reason why people are dying on this lake. That angle is covered significantly. Um, there's a lot of data on that town that was there. I believe it's called Oscar. There's a whole lot of data about what was going on and uh, the racial rides and the killings and the lynchings that happened there. But I can't really go with that angle. And I'll tell you why I can't really go with that angle. Um, the angle is that because there, there was the lynchings and the rides and then the town was flooded, that that's the reason why the lake was cursed. And I can't really go with that angle because if that's the case, everywhere that black people were lynched, um, hurt, harmed, drowned, killed in massive numbers, should be cursed, correct? If you go with that narrative. Now, I'm not saying that's not part of it, but it's got to be more to the story than this. And besides, everybody in Mama's covering that angle, and I don't cover angles that everybody else in their mama cover because it's boring to me. So I'm not saying, I'm not shoo shooing it away if you black like, oh, you shoo shooing away, I ain't shoo shooing away nothing. No, I'm not. The point I'm making is, it's got to be more. That's a surface level explanation. And the simple fact that they did a movie about it, um, pretty much exploiting it and turning it into profit. But everybody's like, oh, the movie came out linear and this, this, this. They just, just exploited the deaths and, and made money off of it nonetheless. Um, I want to see more. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wasn't hard to find when you start digging. It wasn't very hard to find at all. So prior to the Oscarville town or, or Fortswood town that was there, that area was occupied by Cherokee Indians. And the 1830, um, the, 18, the 1830, the Indian Removal Act moved all of those Cherokee Indians out of that area. So, I mean, specifically, they were in that area of Lake Lanier. So, here's what I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen. I submit this to you. You take a Native American area that has Native American burial grounds and Native American altars um, that are there. You take those people out of there, you leave um, places where that were sacred to them, where they worship certain spirits. And I'm going to say this right now, confidently. What happens that was happening at Lake Lanier is due to a spirit. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you probably look it up, there's going to be, and I'm not going to look it up because I don't really care to know the name. You go find a, a spirit that's associated with water. In fact, go find a spirit associated with all the types of death, drownings, lightnings, um, accidents. What else have I seen? That's it. Hitting, being hit by lightning drowning in accidents that's a Cherokee spirit that was worshipped by the Cherokee Indians and that's what's going to be there that's what's going to that's the altar that was being serviced there or one of the altars that was being serviced there and then you combine um, racial rides and death and hangings in that same area where it once was an altar where that spirit was getting serviced and because and it's a territorial spirit. So that territorial spirit was getting service, was getting worship. It's no longer getting the worship that it was getting because everybody's ran out of there. You get new people to come in. This is while it's dry land. They come in, they're living, they're doing what they need to do. You have all this death and bloodshed at that area. 
where the altar to that territorial spirit is and then on top of that you decide you're going to flood out the land of that territorial spirit yes you got a problem on your hands at Lake Lanier 100% problem on your hands a huge freaking problem on your hands I'm not looking into this anymore because I don't want to know the name of the spirit I don't want to dig that deep but it's real easy to see why you have all the paranormal activity there why you have all the rest of the crazy stuff going on there and that's I'm pretty sure is more than one spirit that was worshipped there but you're looking for the one that's associated with water you find a spirit that's associated with water and lightnings normally it was associated with water lightnings and thunder um, all in one then you found whatever's killing all the people in the lake and when I tell you it's some crazy stupid stuff I mean there's one that I just saw where a guy is riding on he's in his boat him and his wife in the boat they see he sits down in the chair at the front of the boat you know the little uh, where you do your bass fishing a little front rider chair and the screws in the chair come loose and he fall into the water and he drowns I mean it, make, it don't make no sense like okay the screws came off that don't make no sense fall into the water and you can't get right back out of the water you literally fall right by the boat and you drown so I saw other news and this is just my synopsis from what I've seen I saw other news where there were about four or five earthquakes um uh, there's a fault that a fault that runs under the uh, the lake. I'm gonna say it's Buford Fault line. Um, and if you remember, we're talking about water that's currently flooded. I mean, land that's currently flooded. Um, and fault lines are active over thousands of years could have been something that came up through that fault line that constantly comes up what doesn't make sense to me is this this is the one thing that doesn't make sense and this will be the one thing that i would say from a research standpoint that makes it not be a spirit that's killing people once they get into the water as i read all those articles they weren't finding bodies in fact there were people who were committed to finding bodies that were like going through the lake trying to find bodies in fact usher's baby mama's son died in that lake and now at five all new a petition to drain lake lanier yeah you heard it right already this year there have been nine boating incidents in the lake and that includes six people hurt and another three who've drowned. The person behind the new effort is a grieving mother and the ex-wife of superstar singer Usher. Her son Kyle Glover died there when he was hit by a jet ski more than a decade ago. The question is whether it's even possible to drain a lake. And she wanted him to drain a lake to find a body. So that's the thing that I would say if you want to lean into the area of a cryptid being there, something actually being in that water, simple fact that they're not recovering bodies would be why I'd say there's something cryptid there but I think it's probably more leaning towards there's a spirit there um, and you may have some water cryptid there as well now what it is I don't know quite frankly I, I have no clue honestly I don't I mean I, that that's some scary stuff right there bro I mean that's truly truly some terrifying stuff um but if you want to know the answer, it's really just go talk to a Cherokee Indian. And I'm not the guy that says, oh, the Cherokee Indi Indians have the answers to all the questions. I I'm not a believer. I'm not a Native American worshiper like, oh, the natives know everything. But in this particular case, you want to have a conversation with them. Real talk. You really do want to have a conversation with one because they'll be able to give you a little bit more understanding into the mythology of those water spirits and the manifestations of those spirits because you got to remember spirit um can manifest and spirits do eat spirits do drink so that might just be the answer to it itself i don't know and i know one thing you ain't getting my black ass to go nowhere near that lake you couldn't pay me to go nowhere near that 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 that's a problem bro that's a problem